the first thing to know about Creo Brew is that it's not coffee, it's not tea, and it's not hot chocolate. So if you're looking for it to be a direct replacement for one of those, you might want to look somewhere else. I'm Kristen, this is Kristen Unpoisoned, and on this channel, we take the poison out of everyday living. And today, we're going to do that by checking out if the healthy hot beverage Creo Brew is worth all the hype. Spoiler alert, you can tell by my almost empty bag that I am a fan of Creo Brew, at least this kind. This is the Nicaraguan Medium Roast. I bought it right off the Creo Brew website. This is 10 ounces and I paid $15.95. From what I've read, a lot of people don't like Creo Brew because they brew it really weak like the package tells them to. They end up with basically water that's slightly brown and has maybe the slightest hint of chocolate to it, which that sounds pretty gross. For me, I like my drinks to be nice and strong, so this is the way that I do it. I normally drink Creo Brew in the morning and I use this pretty big cup, it's about 12 ounces. So I boil up 12 ounces of water and I use three tablespoons of the Creo Brew in my French press. Once the water is boiling, I pour it into the French press over the Creo Brew and let it steep for a while. Okay, while that's steeping, let's take a look at the Creo Brew website. You can see they have a lot of different flavor varieties lots of limited editions that come out for short periods of time. Let's take a look at one of the flavored varieties. So this is the limited edition chocolate macchiato light roast. So it's packed with nutrients, lots of good stuff in there for you. But if we scroll down and look at the ingredients, let's just check out what it actually is. Right, so there's natural coffee flavor natural chocolate flavor and natural cream flavor along with natural vanilla flavor. So the thing about flavorings of any kind, it doesn't actually tell you what the ingredients are so you don't know what you're consuming. For me that's concerning, I'm not going to eat something if I don't know what it is and you probably shouldn't either. Let's just take a quick look at natural and artificial flavors. Okay so this is a PubMed article that I found. You can read all that yourself but there's an important part right here that I found interesting. It says, in reality, natural flavors are a far cry from what consumers might expect, as they can contain both artificial and synthetic chemicals, often used as processing aids. So it could be natural, it could be synthetic. Let's take a look at one more article. Let's take a quick hop over to EWG.com and look at some information there. So I found an article there called Synthetic Ingredients in Natural Flavors and natural flavors in artificial flavors, and it's by David Andrews, who's a senior scientist. You could read this whole thing, but it's really interesting, so... I mean, McDonald's says its natural beef flavor is derived from wheat and milk. I don't know about you, but wheat and milk are two things that I can't handle, so... That would be terrible to eat something. This is natural flavors, but then doesn't even tell you what it is. Scary. Natural flavors can actually contain synthetic chemicals. Another interesting point in this article, the main difference between a natural and artificial flavor is the origin of the flavor chemicals. Natural flavors must be derived from plant or animal material. Artificial flavors are synthesized in the lab. The actual chemicals in these two kinds of flavors may be exactly the same. The chemical structures of the individual molecules may be indistinguishable. So you can make your own conclusions there, but for me, if a company can't be bothered to tell me what's in a product, I can't be bothered to buy it. Alright, our Creo Brew is done steeping now. You can see it's a dark brown color. I love it plain. I don't actually add anything to it. It's a deep, robust, chocolatey taste. It's kind of like a dark chocolate bar, but with the excess sugar removed, which that, I don't know, that sounds kind of gross, but this is really good. It's kind of hard to describe the taste because while it is like a deep, dark, chocolatey, fudgy brownie, it also doesn't have any sugar in it, but it's actually really, really good. I'm sure you could add milk and sugar to it as well if that's your thing, but I've not tried it that way, so I can't comment on how that tastes. So I'd say Creo Brew is for someone who loves chocolate, who is health conscious, and who isn't into tons and tons of sugar. So if you're into super decadent hot chocolates, or you're looking for something that tastes like coffee, this is probably not for you. But for me, I love it, and I love how it makes me feel. It gives me energy that's like sustained, it's not a jolt. It's really great 
if you're trying to cut back on your sugar but you really want some chocolate because this stuff it quenches that chocolate craving i really do love this stuff there are six safe varieties of Creo Brew that I could recommend. The only one that I've actually tried is, of course, this Nicaraguan medium roast. Though I did try the pumpkin spice flavored one, which didn't have any natural flavors or anything. They used actual spices in it. If you wanted to see that review, I'll link it up here somewhere and in the description below. There's the Ecuador French roast, the Ecuador light roast, the Ghana light roast, the one I've tried today, the Nicaragua medium roast, the uber dark Spanish roast, and our sixth one is the Venezuela medium roast. Would it be helpful for you if I made a video taste testing all six of those and comparing the different flavors? If that would be helpful, let me know in the comments. My conclusion is that Creo Brew is worth the hype, but only if you brew it really strong and you go for one of the six unflavored varieties. If you found this helpful, you'll probably like my Chocoholic playlist, which I will link up here and probably in the description below as well for you to watch next. Thanks for watching and keep living an unpoisoned life. Oh, and just in case this is not obvious, this video is not sponsored. I am so thankful for all 68 of my subscribers. You guys have no idea. Thanks, guys.